Hey guys, today I have an ID video on something I think everyone who's been in IT for a really long time has seen, and that is your desktop environment slowly going offline. A machine here and there can't get online, you go walk over to your desk, you type in ipconfig in the command prompt, check out their IP settings, and you see that there is no default gateway, there is no name server, and no IP address. Almost immediately you figure out, oh, well DHCP server is down on the subnet then slowly people start losing their leases and going offline. Now this is a major problem, you, you, especially if you're a desktop support, that people can't get online is very noticeable, it causes a lot of issues, it almost stops them being completely productive in their uh, jobs. So you want to make sure that you really, really understand like when your DHCP server is up and you want to know how to set up a DHCP server probably relatively quickly if there is a serious problem. So today I thought I'd go over how to set up a DHCP server extremely quickly with a very basic configuration and then how to monitor it so to know if your DHCP server is up or not because it's so important to understand like if this service is up it's so critical to most environments nowadays so just be sure to keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to do so the first thing I like to do when I install anything is I actually like searching for the keyword in my package so I know any related packages that I might not realize I need that are just too good to know that are there. So I do that yum search in the keyword, in this case it's DHCP. So I see all the packages related to DHCP on this system. If I read through it really quick, I realize that the one I'm looking for is just called DHCP.x8664. And the dot is the processor architecture. If this was a 32-bit um, machine, you might see I386 or I686 listed here as well. You don't really see that too much anymore. So once I realize which package specifically I need, I'm going to do my yum install. So yum's our packet manager on CentOS and you find it on Red Hat Fedora as well. I'm going to say install the package name. I'm looking for DHCP, the package. It will automatically select the x86-64 version because that is no, it knows that is our processor architecture on the system I'm installing this package on. So it'll take a few minutes to download and install, and it's going to install the required configuration files and binaries needed for the system. There's really in DHCP, there's really one and very important file that pretty much you do your entire configuration on. So this, and they provide also when you install this, it provides some sample configurations. So it's nice to look at the samples to know what's going on. The main file that you need to modify and configure for any of the DHCP changes you need to do is located in etc dhcp in this file the specific one we're looking for is ip version 4 ipv4 um, is dhcpd.conf if you're doing dhcp for ipv6 there is dhcp6.conf my demo today is just going to be on the ipv4 so in user shared doc there is a sample file that I like to look at, and this is just a good way just to help you get started and if you don't remember the exact syntax of your DCP file. So it's like right here in your shared um, user shared docs, DHCP, and in there we have a dhcp.conf.example. So I'm just going to copy that over, over to our etc file. And the reason I'm doing that is because the etc dhcp dhcp.conf file dhcpd.com file is actually empty. So until I copy the sample over, it has no contents. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this file over. And if you notice here, look at all this different configuration settings. So if you want to give a, every time someone boots from a specific machine with a specific Mac, they get a specific IP address. So you do IP reservations that way. You can do multiple subnets. You specify your domain name. You specify your name servers, you specify your default gateway. So a lot of possible configuration, you specify the lease time. So a lot of configuration can go on here. You can specify the boot server, so if you do any sort of hands-free installation, you can do that as well, all in your configuration file. But what I'm looking for today is this very basic subnet declaration. So if your DHCP server is down and you need something really quick, you could do this in just 10 minutes and have this up and running on a machine on your um, subnet or network that you need DTP on. So I'm going to delete all the extra content that I don't need for my very basic install. But it's good to know that it's there and then you could take a look at it if you want to do modifications later on. You can go back and look at that sample file. So I'm going to just keep that very basic area. So I want to specify the name name, my name servers, 
my, my default gateway and then I want to specify my range my IP address range now um, when I'm doing this I'm doing all this in Oracle VirtualBox so of course your IP range will be different if you're doing this like a practice you could select the same configuration I'm doing here uh, and I'm choosing 10.0.2.0 as my network with an IP, um, so, I'm sorry, subnet mask of slash 24. And then I'm giving a range. I want to do 200 to 220. So this is just a small demo. So I'm doing an IP range. So it'll give out IP addresses in that range between 10.0.2.200.10.0.2.220. And then it provides the router for that subnet. So I'm going to go ahead and restart. Sometimes you do have to add a bonification to your network script file in etc um, sysconfig network scripts for the ethernet port. You might have to say it's enabled for DHCP. So once I do that and my DHCP server is up, now I want to make sure I can monitor it to make sure I know that it's up. So I want to make sure that if anything happens to my DHCP server, server that I am notified. So I'm going to go over to my Nagio server. I'm going to log in, and they have this really easy script that you can just run, point it to your DCP server, you can point it to which Ethernet port to check, and then um, kind of maybe you can ask, say, what IP address you're expecting. So if you go over to Configuration Wizards, there's already DCP right here listed, which will make it really easy for us to get this configured and up and running in a few minutes. So when we run our wizard, the first thing it's going to ask is the IP address for the interface uh, that we want to check on our DCP server for um, DHCP services. So depending if your environment has like a DHCP helper or relay agent or it's on a trunk port, all might affect this. So I would just say try to point it to the interface you believe will work or preferably on the same subnet as the Nagio server. That would probably make it easier to check. Then we have specifying the IP address. Um, that we might expect on a port on the interface on the machine that we're checking from. So our Nagio server. So I'm going to do an IP, IP space A. I'm going to get the Ethernet port on my Linux system. I'm going to enter that as the interface. I want to check for DHCP services to see if that port got um, a DHCP address. Then we want to say who to notify. We do want to be notified when there is an issue. So I could say everybody. You could add it as part of a group. So if you have multiple DHCP servers, you create a DHCP server group. And lastly, you want to make sure you open up your firewall for DHCP services. So you want to open up um, UDP port 67 and 68 and make sure that you're able to uh, send traffic in and out of that port. So once that is done, um, it's going to con configure our monitoring for DHCP. It usually takes a couple minutes for the first time to check. So you might see that it's pending. After a few minutes, it'll go ahead and check. And if everything's configured correctly, then you should be able to see that it is successfully getting DTP information and it got a DTP address. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, make sure that you are monitoring your DTP environment and know that for sure your end users are getting their IP addresses.